Hey guys, and welcome to the first devlog for a brand new project. This is the second devlog for my indie survival game called Bang Knight. Welcome to the third devlog for my survival game called Bang Knight. Hey everyone, welcome back to the fourth Bang Knight devlog. Those of you who have been around the channel for a while will probably remember that I used to run a devlog series for a survival game called Magnite. However, due to various factors such as the fact that I was no longer enjoying developing the game using Unity Game Engine, as well as school, I had to put the project on hold for a while. However, now I am back and this time we are going to be developing the game in Pygame with Python instead of Unity. And in this devlog I hope to catch you up on all of the progress I have made so far. So the first and probably the largest thing that I needed to get sorted out was the game's procedural generation. Essentially this means that instead of having to go in and place every part of the world painstakingly by hand, I can just give the computer some rules and the world will be generated for us. This also has the added benefit that the world can be different every time you load up a new game, instead of having to play on the same map every time. So obviously the first thing that I needed to do was learn about how procedural generation works. So I started doing some research. found some code that would allow me to generate these lists that when arranged correctly would form terrain. So I took this code and wrote my own custom script that would take this large list and write it to a text file, which would end up looking something like the one you see on screen now. And then we can just read that text file back into the game as tiles, and this actually worked better than I thought it would. However, there were a few underlying issues. First of all, the game would start lagging a lot as I made the world larger. This is because we are currently iterating through every single tile in the game world and rendering it, even when the tile is outside the bounds of the screen. So when dealing with procedural generation, the best way to handle this is by creating a chunking system, which depending on the position of the player will only render a certain amount of tiles at once. There is just one problem. Yeah, I have absolutely no idea how to create a chunking system. I tried everything, maths, lists, dictionaries, and after going through many iterations, I realized that nothing wanted to work and all the results I got were either weird or just didn't work at all. So after two days of coding, crying, and almost giving up on the project entirely multiple times, I found a tutorial by Fluffy Potato. Well actually, I'd already known about the tutorial, I just hadn't watched it for some reason. And it totally didn't fix the issue I'd been facing for the last 2 or 3 days in 25 minutes. So we now have a way to generate infinite terrain that wouldn't crash my computer. However, there was another problem. The system I was using to generate the terrain kinda sucked. Just look at this terrain. It looks good in some areas, but uh, not in other areas. So even though I really didn't want to, considering the insane amount of time I'd spent up to this point, I had to throw out the old system and began learning how to use Perlin Noise. Now I'm sure most of you here already know what Perlin Noise is. Basically you give it an X and Y position in the world and it returns a height value between 1 and negative 1. And what makes Perlin Noise so ridiculously cool is that the values are smoothly generated making it perfect for generating terrain. So after researching how the Python noise library worked, I was able to set up a 2D noise generator with just one line of code. Then we just used some if statements to check the value of the noise and assign the appropriate tiles. So in my case, anything greater than 0.8 becomes water and anything less becomes grass. And just like that, we have a way to smoothly generate infinite terrain. I then set up a similar system for generating rocks and trees. And with that, the world generation was pretty much done and looking pretty cool. Now, I know that there are definitely some areas I can still improve upon. For example, next up, I would like to add biome support to the generator. But for now, this works well enough. So with the massive task of procedural generation finally complete, I could move on to doing some more gameplay related stuff. First, I've added a player character, gave him some animations for walking and idle. Then I gave him the ability to swim, simply by checking if the tile he's colliding with is water. And if so, we switch his state from walking or idle to swimming. Next up was the ability to chop down trees by using an axe and collecting rocks using a stone pickaxe. Then I made an inventory that would allow the player to collect the items. The inventory works by having a two-dimensional list, which is essentially a bunch of empty lists within one big list. 
Then when the player comes across a new item in the world, we iterate through every slot in the list and check if there was already an instance of that item in the inventory. If there isn't, then we put the item into the first empty slot we can find. And if we already have an instance of the item, we can simply add one to that to the count of that item. The last thing I got around to doing was adding fishing. Uh, yeah, there isn't really much else to say here. You can just cast the rod into the water and when it goes down, you click and can reel in a fish. Now I think this is where we're going to leave this devlog. I want to thank everyone so much for the support. As of writing this, we are 5 subscribers away from 800, which is absolutely crazy. Regarding this devlog series, I'm probably not going to be putting out videos as often as I did with the old Magnite devlogs. So if you want more frequent updates or just want to come chat with me and other people in our community, come join the Discord server. Before we end, I would like to say a massive thank you to Danix for being a server booster on the Discord. Thanks everyone so much and I'll see you all next time.